Pharmacology SAQ 1. Explain zero order and first order kinetics by using examples 6 marks. Zero order kinetics occurs when a chemical reaction's rate is independent of the concentration of the reacting components and is therefore constant. A constant amount of drug is eliminated per unit time. It is also known as saturation kinetics, indicating that enzyme activity cannot be increased by increasing substrate concentration. Examples of zero-order elimination includes ethanol, phenytoin, and salicylates at high doses. There is no steady state in zero-order kinetics. If the rate of drug delivery exceeds excretion, plasma levels will continue to rise to toxic levels. Drugs that undergo zero-order kinetics may therefore have a narrow therapeutic window. A small increase in dose may cause a large increase in plasma levels, making toxicity more likely. In first-order kinetics, a constant proportion of drug is eliminated per unit time. It occurs when a chemical reaction's rate depends on the concentration of the reacting components. This is an exponential process. First-order kinetics is also known as linear kinetics. The majority of metabolic processes are first-order, as there is a relative excess of enzyme compared to substrate, so enzyme activity is not rate-limiting. The time course of the decrease of the drug concentration in a plasma can be described by an exponential equation in the form of C equals CO times E to the power of negative KT, where C is drug concentration, CO is extrapolated initial drug concentration, K is the elimination rate constant, and T is time. First order reactions may become zero order when the enzyme system is saturated. For example, Phenytoin obeys first-order kinetics at low doses, but zero-order at higher therapeutic doses. Discuss the pharmacokinetics of drugs administered via the rectal route, 4 marks. Rectal administration of drugs is used for drugs that are required to either produce a local effect, for example, anti-inflammatory drugs such as mesalazine, suppositories, enemas for ulcerative colitis, or to produce systemic effects, for example, paracetamol and diclofenac. Drug administration via the rectal route is useful when no IV access is available in unconscious patients and in patients who are fasting or vomiting. Absorption of drugs following rectal administration can be reduced by solid dosage forms, low surface area for drug absorption by the rectal mucosa, as the rate of diffusion of a substance across a membrane is proportional to the membrane area A, and the concentration gradient, delta C, across the membrane and inversely proportional to its thickness, D, based on fixed principle of diffusion. Presence of fecal material, drug metabolism by intestinal flora, diarrhea, etc. Bioavailability is variable, less than oral, therefore higher concentration and larger doses are usually required and may be 2 to 10 times than that via the oral route. Drugs can partially bypass the liver up to 50% following systemic absorption, which reduces hepatic first-pass effect. Therefore, rectal drug delivery can provide significant local and systemic effects for various drugs, despite the relatively small surface area of the rectal mucosa. Percentage of drug bypassing the liver depends on where it is inserted. The superior rectal vein drains the upper part of the rectum, and the inferior and middle rectal veins drain the lower part of the rectum. The superior rectal vein drains into the portal vein, which passes the blood through the liver prior to reaching the systemic circulation. In contrast, the inferior and middle rectal veins drain into the inferior vena cava and therefore directly into the systemic circulation. Absorption of rectal drugs via the inferior and middle rectal veins and lymphatics can reduce the hepatic first pass effect and thus increasing bioavailability.